Are you having problems with desync or just struggling to find the right sequence settings for your projects in Adobe Premiere Pro? Well, if so, in this video, we're going to be covering the best sequence settings for your projects. What's going on guys, Chad here from How To Tech, the channel dedicated to helping you take your tech to the next level. And in this video, we are going to be covering the best sequence settings for your projects in Adobe Premiere. All right, so jumping straight in, the first thing we need to do is start a new sequence. So you can use the shortcut Control N to bring up a new sequence, or you can also go this way about it, and that is File, New, Sequence. And you can see right there that it said Control N. And there's a few things here. We've got our sequence presets. A lot of these are already created through Adobe Premiere, and there's some other ones right here at the bottom that you can see that are custom created by me. I've got 1080p 60. FPS, and then I've also got music out, which those are presets. One's for my Music High channel, and the other one is just for 1080p recording at 60 frames per second. I haven't done any 30 in a while, but I will also show you guys how to do that. So you can see we've got our settings, and then we've got our tracks. So what we're going to do is we're going to create a new preset today. So we're just not even going to worry about anything over here, and we're going to go to settings. So the first thing I want to do is change the editing mode. And you can see this is already set to custom. Yours might be set to something else. Don't worry about this. If you can't click custom, once you start changing stuff, it will change to custom on its own. So don't worry about that. The next thing you're gonna to wanna to do is click on time base. This is going to determine the time base that it uses whenever you're editing. It's got 10 frames, 12 frames, all this for different cinematics. If you're doing 60 frames per second, I suggest 60 or 59.94. And if you're doing 30, I suggest 30 or 29.97. Now, I know some people that just you know, completely believe in the 29.97 and the 59.94, but I've been perfectly fine every single time that I've done YouTube and haven't had any problems with desync going with 60 and 30. So your mileage may vary, I just suggest those. Your frame size, this depends on whether or not you're wanting to do 1080 or 720 or maybe even something higher. You can scale to this. Uh, for 1080, you're going to be doing 1920 by 1080, and you can see right here 16 by 9. So if you're doing regular, you know, widescreen aspect ratio for YouTube, this is going to be what you want to use uh, 16 by 9 aspect ratio. The pixel aspect ratio is going to be 1.0. This means that your pixels are going to be perfect squares. I think these might be variants for different formats like a GoPro and stuff like that because I know some of them have like a fisheye look to it and I think that's what these are relevant to but if you just want standard video I suggest 1.0 your fields now this determines whether or not you're using interlaced video or not and I like progressive scan just because it keeps that render coming out perfectly for me and I don't have any of those lines and that's something you'd have to look up if you're interested in what like interlaced video and stuff like that is now this is actually kind of related to the time base. This is the code that it's showing. So you can actually set your display format in FPS time code or frames. I set mine to, um, I believe 60 FPS time code just because it's easier to read on the uh, timeline down here. The audio sample rate, I suggest using whatever you're recording at. Um, I record at 48,000 yeah, Hertz right there. So that's what I use. If you're recording at 44,100 um, Hertz, then use those. If you uh, need help finding that, go to your audio control panel, uh, go to your playback devices, or actually recording devices. I'll pull this up over here for you guys and show you under your recording. You can look at your microphone. This is my main recording mic right here, and I can go to the advanced, and you can see it's at 4,800, or 48,000, and that's how you can know the right levels to use for that. I use audio samples, not milliseconds just because I'm using the same as time code. It's just a little bit easier for me to follow with editing. Go with whatever is more helpful for you. This is not gonna change the audio sample and the display format. It's not gonna change the quality of your video. It's just how that you view the timeline. Preview file format, I use iframe only, MPEG and uh, MPEG, whatever you wanna call it. And this has always worked well for me. I haven't had any problems with it. If you have used these other formats and they've worked good for you, let us know in the comment section down below. It might help somebody out. But this right here has always worked fine for me. And of course your video preview, you want to, I always use the same as my frame size. So if I'm doing 1920 by 1080 up here, I'm gonna do that down here as well. And you can use the maximum render quality and maximum bit depth. This is something you can uh, uncheck whenever you're rendering. I have them for video previews, and the reason why is so I can actually get the best quality look and when I'm doing color correction in my videos. And 
Also, I have composite and linear color check. This requires GPU acceleration or max render quality. I just have this checked because I want to see exactly or pretty close to what I'm going to be rendering out to you guys on YouTube. VR properties, this is something I don't mess with. Obviously, I don't upload in VR. I'm not at all familiar with that, and that is a completely different video for somebody else. Um, let's move over to the another very important part. And this is the audio tracks and the video tracks. So by default, you can state how many tracks you want whenever you create in your uh, sequence. So you can set, if you do a lot of, say, cut commentaries with a camera over top of your gameplay or something like that, if you guys do video game gameplays, um, you might want two video tracks. Uh, me, I do a lot of different editing. I have overlays over that. I also have uh, lower thirds that pop in. That's why I use four video tracks, and you can pump that up to five if you're doing more cinematic stuff and you need those tracks. If you're just doing a uh, simple just gameplay as your video, no overlays, and then just audio, you might be fine with one video track. And I will show you just in a moment once we create these what these are. Um, the audio is the same way, just however many audio tracks you need. Um, I've got mine set to stereo. I do not record in surround sound or any of these other formats. And I keep the track type to standard as well because that's the same way I record. You can pan and balance these off to the side. So you could say for your audio, say if you put your commentary on audio track one, you can have it panned completely to the left side and then your gameplay to the right. That'd be very disorienting, but if that's something you want to do, you can do it. So after you've got all these settings set up right, all you got to do is click on save preset here and give it a name. So like mine, I would call 1080p, let's see, I'll just do 1080p video. And this is just for the YouTube video. And you could give it some kind of description. I'm going to say thanks for watching because, you know, why not? And click OK. And what it did is it put this preset now under my uh, custom folders in the preset. So next time I go to create a custom sequence, I don't have to go through all these settings that we just went through and I'm gonna have them every time. And it's got a description there. So if you have like similar 1080p 60s, um, but with some slightly different things, um, you can have those presets there and you can have a description kind of discerning what that is. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna name, you can name your sequence. I'm not gonna name it. I'm just gonna keep it as sequence 06 and I'm gonna click okay and it created the sequence and right here I can show you guys right now is the four video tracks and the four audio tracks and if we would have went with less we would not have this many tracks like right here we wouldn't have v4 v3 and v2 we could just have one and same thing with the audio but yeah guys that's going to be all for this video thank you so much for watching I apologize for not uploading near as much to this channel I'm going to be trying to fix that in the near future but if you guys did like this video and it helped you out hit that like button and subscribe to the channel if you guys haven't already I would love to hear your comments in the comment section down below I'll reply to anything that you guys have down there if it's reasonable of course um, but that's all for this video thank you so much for watching this has been Chad from How To Tech helping you take your tech to the next level and I will see you guys in the next video peace